Good evening, everybody. It's Monday evening, and the day has come and gone. But all is well in heaven, and all is well on earth for those who trust the Lord God Almighty who sits on the throne, and his son Jesus makes us his own by his precious blood. We are filled with the Holy Spirit. The word of God is sure. And no matter what we're going through today, we're safe in the knowledge that God is sovereign. Not only does he know all things, he takes care of all things, knows exactly what's going on. I praise him for that today. I praise him that the joy of the Lord is my strength. I praise him for the word of God. I praise him for a fantastic, great, loving congregation to pastor. A congregation that loves the Lord, loves their pastors, plural, and uh, love each other and uh, minister to each other in times of need. And uh, praise God for it. Now, let's take our Bibles tonight before we go to bed and go to the book of John chapter 3. And we'll be going tonight down there to verse 14. And 15. 14 and 15. Have you got it? All right. John 14 and 15. Here in this beautiful portion of Scripture, Jesus is talking to Nicodemus and trying to explain to him a few things that would help him understand who Jesus is, who he is, and how to get to heaven. And he's using a a situation out of the book of Numbers in the Old Testament that Nicodemus, knowing the Old Testament scriptures, would have been very aware of. A time when the children of Israel were being brought out of Egypt and they got out in the desert and became rebellious and they became nasty-hearted. They really did. They, they talked against their leader. They complained. They moaned. They wanted to, you know, they questioned everything that God was doing, and God got fed up with it, and God caused a bunch of snakes to come in and take care of things. I just want you to know, the whole picture of this is that God's in control of nature, and God can take snakes to destroy, or he could turn it around and create something that was even the very emblem of, of a snake and say, if you look on that, you'll be healed. And that's what he did. He said, he said, if you'll just take a high pole and hold it up high, and if you will carve, a, if you will get a snake made out of bronze, put it up there on top, those that have been bitten and injured by the snake bites will be healed. And they did, and they were, and God was true to his word. It's a mystery why he used a snake there on the top of that stick. But I know one thing. There was an elevation look. God wants to get us looking up, first of all. Instead of looking at all of our circumstances, I got all kinds of circumstances, and so do you, that are not elevating. But I know who's in charge, and that's an elevating moment for me to think that God's in charge, that God loves me. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help, because my help cometh from the Lord. It's a, an elevating experience. If you're looking to Trump or Biden, or if you're looking to Congress, or if you're looking to Harrisburg, or if you're looking to relationships, or if you're looking, uh, you know, even if you're looking to the church, you may be disappointed. But if you look to Jesus, he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Now, I can't exactly tell you all of the reasons why he said use a snake to be lifted up. Other than a couple things that have crossed my mind, he was not promoting snake handling. Get that clear. That's not what he was doing. I think he was saying, I got the power to cause nature to harm you or to cause nature to bless you. I'm big enough to have it either way, and you need to know it. Thirdly, 
I think he was saying that even as Satan, the serpent of Eden, who tempted Adam and Eve, I think he was making a statement and saying, when I go to the cross, you will look to me and you will be healed because I'm way bigger than that serpent of Eden. I believe that's in there somewhere. That, that's just my interpretation, but I believe that's in there somewhere. One thing I do know, when you obey God and do what God says, look up. They got their healing. And I want you to be encouraged to look up. Be encouraged. Look up. Look to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and is set down at the right hand of God the Father, interceding for you and I. Look up to him. Look up to him in faith and believe him. People are doing that nowadays, don't you know? There's a lot of people coming to Christ in these perilous times, and there's going to be a lot more. We're embarking nationwide, I believe, on the greatest maybe revival and move of God ever right before Christ comes back. You want to get in on that. You want to get your family in on that, neighbors in on that. Man, we don't want anybody to go to hell. We want to see people go to heaven and be with Jesus. And Jesus said, look up. And when you look up, you'll be healed. And he said, you've got to look up if you want. If you keep looking down, everything will drag you down. You getting that? Look up. That's not just flipping the, oh, look up, things will get better. No, look up to God. Look up to Jesus. Look up to the Holy Spirit and things will get better. Maybe not in your circumstances, but in your heart and in your spirit. So now, Jesus, come on, and he says, if you look up to me, I'm on the cross, you'll never perish. See, they just come through a situation where a bunch of people died because they got bitten. Jesus is saying, you won't die if you have me in your life. No wonder Jesus called death sleep. You see, if you're born twice, you only die once. Born of the natural birth and born of the spiritual birth. Then you only die once and are laid in the grave. And even then, on that great day of rapture, 1 Thessalonians 4, when the trumpet shall blow and the shout come from heaven and the grave shall open up, the dead in Christ shall rise first and we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to be with the Lord in the air. The very same body that died and was laid in that grave is coming up to rise again, only this time, it won't be mortal. It won't be prone to sickness nor disease or COVID or arthritis or heartache or decay. It'll be immortal, just like Jesus. I know about you. That's pretty exciting. He says, if you look at me, I'll give you life everlasting. And then he goes to the golden text of the Bible, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not a son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Might be saved. You know, his goal is not to condemn us and put us down. God knows we do enough of that to ourselves. And if we don't do a good job of it, the world will do it for us, or even people we know will do it for us. But I tell you one thing, Jesus died on the cross to take condemnation away. Big difference between conviction and condemnation. Uh, when Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, conviction, he makes you realize you need to upgrade and do a whole lot better, that what you're doing is wrong, but he doesn't send you away feeling guilty. He sends you away feeling hopeful and fulfilled and like, oh my, I found somebody who told me everything I ever did, and yet he loves me enough to have an appointment with me, and he says, neither do I condemn thee, go and sin no more. Wow. Wow. And uh, so that's it in a nutshell. Hey, before I leave you tonight, I don't want you to feel condemned. don't want you to feel down. I want you to feel elevated and lifted up. If you're hurt and you need a healing, and we need healings in my own family right now, but God's good, not doubting him a little bit. Okay? <laughs> I just was going through my poem book, and I found this poem that I wrote, and uh, 
it ends up coming to Calvary and to the blood of Jesus. And, and so uh, I, I, I want to read it to you. Because inevitably there's always somebody that says, the Lord's got to get tired of all these different times he's forgiven me. I don't believe it. If he told Peter that forgiveness and love was unconditional, he'll do the same for you and I. Okay? Here's a poem. Don't you ever get tired, Lord, of forgiving me. You make my eyes run over all the time. Tears of joy fall down like bright sunshine. You cleanse me in your blood and set me free. You never get tired of forgiving me. I never ever seem to get it totally right, but kneeling here in your mercy, it all seems right. The blood that flows down is full of grace. Your nail-scarred hands reach out and touch my face. When God looks down and takes a look at me, he sees me through the blood of the cross of Calvary. All praise and glory goes to Jesus' name. My life will never, ever be quite the same. Thank you, Jesus. We accept you as our Lord and Savior to come into our hearts, to save us, to set us free, to give us victory, and we make you the Lord of our lives. Amen and amen. Have a good rest tonight. And maybe I hope that you caught the picture on the first part of this program. And, uh, and it's uh, the latest one in uh, our paintings from the paint room. And uh, it's a painting of a beautiful elk uh, out of Elk County. And uh, it's trimmed out in a birch, uh, birch bark uh, frame. I want to thank my dear friends and uh, Steve and Joy for rounding up that in pieces of birch for me. And uh, I think they make a marvelous setting for that elk. It's a frosty morning. You can actually see the frost coming out of his breath as he's making his challenge to the other bulls. All right. Have a good night. Sleep tight. God bless you. Bye-bye.